Hello, it's Aga from Arby's Artist. You asked me many times for showing you the post-production process for exteriors. So here it is. Today we'll be working on this image. It's maybe more like a closed space, but I would say it's more exterior than interior. So let's begin. I want to show you everything step by step, so I divided this video into three parts that will show different steps of post-production process. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you will get notification when the next part is live. So with that being said, we can start work on the image. Ok, so you can see that I have the original image and all render elements open in Photoshop. If you want to know more about the render elements, I've already made two videos on this topic, so make sure you check it out. I put the link in the corner. Ok, so I turn off all layers and only keep the original image turned on. You can see that I have this layer locked, so if I double click on it, it will unlock it. I'm a fan of clean files, so I also rename it. Let's say base render. And I set the color to this layer, so it's easy to find. By the way, the scene was created in V-Ray, so all render elements are named from this software. But if you are a Corona user, I think you should be able to find adequate render elements based on the video I've just talked about. Ok, so let me show you what elements I have. Here I have V-Ray V-Ray color and some Multimate elements. Let's select them all and group together. Ctrl plus G and let's name it Selection Elements for instance. Now we have the element for Reflections, Row Reflections, Specular, Z-Depth, Atmosphere and one light select which is the Sunlight. Again, let's turn them all off, select all and group together. I'll name it Render Elements. Ok, so we have a nice clean file to start working on it. I will start with Reflections. Do you remember what we need to do next? I hope that your answer is to change it to the screen mode. So let's determine where to add some additional reflections by turning on and off the layer. Ok, I think that here it helps a lot and this metal looks much more interesting and 3D dimensional with more reflections. I decrease the opacity to check how it looks. Ok, I definitely want more reflections on the metal parts, but for instance on the plants it needs to be really subtle. So let's go back to 100% and normal mode for a moment. I want you to see more clearly what I am doing. Ok, I select the metal from these render elements. If you don't have a channels panel visible, go to Window, Channels and drag and drop channels tab here. When you select the blue channel, everything which is blue is white and the rest is black. If you click it with the Ctrl key hold, you will make a selection. Click on the mask icon. Ok, so you can see that now I only have the reflection elements on the metal bridge. We can go back to the screen mode and adjust opacity. I think something like this works fine. Now I copy this layer with Alt and I'll delete the mask. I decrease the opacity as well. We can leave it on the whole image. We have also the raw reflections element here, which gives us the full reflection of objects reflecting in a scene. If you combine it with the reflection filter pass, which defines the strength of the reflection, you will get the normal reflection pass. Anyway, I like how this pass fine-tune the metal. If you click on the mask with Ctrl, the mask will be selected. So now, we can go to the raw reflections and click the mask. I add this only a bit, as I want a more subtle effect. Now we can add some highlights. Again, I change the mode to the screen. 
let's add the mask and paint it out from the rocks with the use of black soft brush, as it attracts too much attention there. Let's see how it looks. I think I have to paint out specular from the roof as well. I will check the full progress. If you click the layer with holding alt, Photoshop will show you just this layer. I think we can add more specular in this area. Copy the layer and fill the mask in black. Alt plus backscapes in my case. Now we can use soft white brush and paint the places which we want to highlight even more. Look how huge a difference it makes, awesome! We need to agree that we made a great progress so far, don't we? I think that we need to paint out some reflections from the pillars though, as it shouldn't stand out so much. Much better. Now, we we'll work with the atmosphere element that stores our fog effect. I move the z-depth up. Let's see which mode will help. Maybe lighten? No. I go with the screen mode here as well. Cool. Now I use a ZDEV as a mask to control the intensity of the fog in relation to the distance. Let me show you. Go to the channels, click with Ctrl. We can turn off this layer and we can click a mask. Ok, so we can see that now the layer with the fog is more intense at the foreground than background and this is opposite effect than we want. So we need to use shortcut Ctrl plus I to invert the mask. So basically what I did here, I treated the inverted Z depth as a mask for my fog effect. I think it's too strong though, so I decrease the intensity of it. Something like this is just fine. Now the light select. Let me check different options here. Hmm, both effects are cool in some places. Why not to use both effects actually? Let's start with the screen. I decrease the opacity. So basically, we make the light from the sun a bit more visible on this image. We can copy the mask and change the mode to color dodge. However, I like this effect only on the plants in the foreground. So let's go to the selection pass and let's select the red channel. Awesome! And click the mask now. Great! I love this effect here, but I think we need to paint out some parts with the black brush. A bit from here as well, as I want to focus the viewer's attention in the particular area. Let me slightly adjust these effects. That's really awesome. I think I can add a bit of additional sun on the trees as well. Let's find multimat element with the trees and select them using a right channel. In this case, green. Copy the light select render element and apply mask. In general, I like how it looks. It adds some details to the background. Now, let's see what progress we did with post-production with the render elements. I'm really happy with the progress so far. But there is more we can do here, and we still can make progress. So let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do the next part of this video and continue working on this image. 
Also, if you want to know all about artistic approach in RVs, I'd like to invite you to check out my book, where I explain all needed steps to create beautiful images. Click here to check it out on our website. Bye-bye!